This week on MacBreak Studio, I've got something very cool to show you, but it's probably going to cost you some money. Sorry, not sorry. So Keeper is a new plugin from Sheffield Softworks, that's Patrick Sheffield, and it's distributed through the FX Factory platform. The demo is fully functional like all FX Factory products, and once you installed it, it shows up in your effects browser in the Sheffield Softworks category. Now as a disclaimer, Patrick did provide me a copy of this plugin to play around with it, but I'm not being compensated besides that in any way for this little review. And uh, Patrick hasn't seen this. He doesn't know anything about it. I asked him a little bit of information to share with you here, but this is really just my feelings and comments about this product. Keeper uses machine learning to isolate people from the background. So with this shot of me sitting in my little temporary studio here, all I need to do is add it to this clip. So I'll just double click on it and it immediately isolates me from the background. Doesn't matter if the background's in focus or out of focus, doesn't matter the other objects in the shot, it really kind of does a one shot, sort of like a key. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And you'll notice if I scrub forward, even my hands are isolated as well. Although you'll see that my ring here is a little transparent. By the way, the reason the background is gray here is because I have a connected color solid generator that's out of view in the timeline. In the video inspector, you can choose to look at the composite, you can look at a matte view, and you can look at a matte over background view. I'm going to stick with the composite. There are three quality settings, and these just relate to playback performance. So if you're getting slow playback performance, you can go to low. I would suggest working in medium and then switching to high for your final render. You can invert the matte, and then there's a couple of controls for adjusting the matte thin, thick, and dilate and erode. And then you can soften each of those. If you click help, you're brought to a website that does a good job of describing how each of those parameters work. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time on them here, besides which they pretty much work out of the box. The only thing I might often do is use a little bit of thin where you might have a lighter background here. So I might crank that thin up a little bit just to pull in the mat so we don't have a white fringe around there. Now. Before I tell you more about what you can do with Keeper, I want to talk about what you can't do. If we go back to the FX Factory webpage for Keeper, you can see it says that Keeper uses machine learning to extract people from their backgrounds without requiring green screen or prepared backdrops. And then this part's important. Keeper is not a replacement for traditional green screen used in special effects shots, rather it allows the user to apply filters and effects separately to the people or the backgrounds to create unique or engaging effects you can kind of use it as a green screen replacer in some instances. Let's look at a couple examples. First of all, because it uses machine learning, it only works on people. So you're not gonna have much luck if you try applying it to a shot of your dog or maybe a shot of your horse. Although it almost does the horse. If there's more than one person in the shot, it will attempt to identify all of them. And it doesn't just work on a close-up; it'll identify entire people, including all the clothing they're wearing. So I'll just turn it on where I've applied it to this shot. And you can see it does a good job of isolating uh, all three people in the shot. On this shot, where we have a lot of people walking around, I'll turn it off for a second. It again tries to isolate people, but if people are too far away, it really can't pick them out. So the people can be full frame, but they need to be close in the frame for it to work correctly. In this example, I'm on the Brooklyn Bridge with a lot of people behind me. And if I enable Keeper, you'll see it does a decent job of isolating me, but it can't really figure out what to do with all of his other people there. And here's an example of some stock footage with this little girl that's so far away, it's hard to identify that she is a person at all. So she's not even picked out. It can do a very good job picking out clothes that we saw before or hats, like in this example, but doesn't do as well with any objects that people might be holding, like the knife in this instance, you can see kind of disappears, although the hat looks great. And here it does a good job of keeping Justine's helmet on where she's riding a bike. However, if I move through the clip, you'll notice as we go down and see the bike, the bike kind of disappears, but it does a very good job on isolating a shot of her with her helmet. 
And just to drive the point home, here are several different interview clips that I've all applied the default keeper to without making any adjustments at all to it, just so you can see how it works when you actually play the video. And you'll notice with each of them, there's a little bit of chatter or a few issues that make it really not useful for replacing a green screen key, which it's not designed to do. And it's very apparent in this last clip with the hair coming in and out. And you can get it better, but it's not really designed to be a green screen key replacer. So what can you use it for? Well, anytime you want to treat the foreground and background separately are good opportunities for Keeper. So with this interview shot, let's say that I feel the background's a little too distracting. So I've duplicated the shot on top of itself. I'll turn off the bottom one by tapping the V key. And on the top one, I'll add Keeper. And it isolates him very well from the background. Of course, as a key, it doesn't look great because of all of this uh, fringing white detail in his hair, but I'm using the same background. So let me enable that background. And now what I can do is color correct or add effects to that background. For instance, here I've added some blur to blur the background a little bit more to make it uh, not as distracting from the interview subject. I can also add a color correction here where I've darkened it a little bit and desaturate it a little bit to pull it away. So I'll turn those off and on, and you can see how I've been able to use Keeper to isolate the subject in the foreground from the background by doing separate color corrections. I also have a little color correction on him just on the foreground where I've lightened him up a little bit. So I think it's a great tool for doing this type of thing where you need to isolate a person from the background. You can also use it to place text between a person and the background. So here I have this shot of uh, Martin walking along the beach here, and I've got one of our Ripple callouts complete tracked to the background here, uh, but it's right in front of him. However, I've duplicated the same clip on top of itself, and I'll turn that on. And now that it completely obscures the title, but if I turn on Keeper and notice I have all the default settings, I haven't done anything to it at all. And we immediately get a much more interesting effect where he ends up in front of the text, but not so much you can't read it. I also have added some color grading to the bottom one, which I'll turn on just to make the bottom a little darker and a little blurrier to make the foreground stand out. So it can be a great way to add text to composites basically, instead of needing to do any kind of roto work. If you have a clean plate of your shot, you can add some interesting effects. So for this shot where I recorded myself doing a little intro for an earlier episode, I have a shot before I entered the scene. So if I toggle this one off, I have a still frame from before I entered the scene below it. And I have this one on top with Keeper applied. So if I turn Keeper on and off, you can see they're slightly different, but it works perfectly just by toggling that on and off. You can see that I disappear from the scene. Because of that, you can then use something like transitions in order to animate uh, your subject on and off the screen. And in this case, I'm using our RT transmissions, which take the built-in transitions from Final Cut Pro and make them work on connected clips without affecting the clip underneath. So you get something like this. Here's an example where I actually did replace the background. This is a stock photo of a reporter outside some traffic here. And I have below him a different shot. Uh, I'll turn on Keeper. And you can see I did increase the thin a little bit to pull in the mat. And in his hair, it's a little bit white on the background. If I get rid of that background, you can see the white in his hair. I would love it if they introduced to this ability to do a little bit of color correction on the edge detail, but what it did is increase the thin amount in order just to pull it back a little bit. And then I've placed him in an area that's pretty white to kind of hide that. Uh, but it creates a fairly convincing composite in this case. However, you can see his microphone, as I mentioned before, objects don't get picked up so well. His, uh, his microphone has transparency. But to fix that, because the microphone is entirely within his body, I duplicated the clip again. I'll tap the V key to enable it. And I used a little draw mask to draw the mask and isolate that microphone so that it stays fully opaque. And then of course you can animate that draw mask to move. I didn't really need to do it here. So there are instances where you could use this to replace backgrounds. 
It can also really speed up your workflow when working with stills. So here I have a stock photo, and instead of bringing it into an image editing application in order to remove the foreground from the background, I'll just enable Keeper, and it takes her right out. I have adjusted it in order to get a better mat. We'll look at the mat view here. And I've increased the thicken in order to deal with this area here with the umbrella because I wanted to include the umbrella in the mat. But then if I turn on my new background, I've quickly created not a fantastic composite, but a decent composite really in a matter of seconds. Here's another example of a stock photo, and this is original background. And I'll enable Keeper. I've increased the thicken a little bit just to help with the hair detail. And then I've placed a bunch of different backgrounds underneath it as a connected clip in an audition. So if I press Control, Option, right arrow, I can cycle through those different background options to see how they look with the foreground element. Finally, here's kind of a fun effect where I've taken this clip of this young woman running. I've duplicated on top of itself. On the top one, I've added Keeper. I'll turn it on to isolate her. I don't care that there is some extra fringe white around her at all because on the bottom clip, I'll enable it, I've added the uh, comic basic effect, one of the built-in comic filters in Final Cut Pro, just to create kind of a surreal look to this. Just to give you an idea of other things that you can do by using Keeper. Comments, questions, leave them below. We'd love to know what you think. Please subscribe. We'll see you next time here on MacBreak Studio.